Hi uh, yeah, everyone. So I'm Masahiko Rakawa, Kobe University. Kobe is near here. I hope you enjoy this area in Japan. So it's my honor to have a presentation in this conference. I will talk as a representative of these six authors. So our chapter title is Exploration-Based Reconstruction of Planet Smalls. So here is the contents of our chapter. I'm uh, responsible for this chapter and uh, this section, but I will talk all of them today. So I'd like to talk about the small asteroid based on the planetary exploration and their relationship to the planet Mars. So, and I'd like to suggest that the small asteroid, a second or a later generation planet Mars, suffering the catalytic disruption and reaccumulation. But the uh, constituent, uh, constituent materials mostly keep the original information of the first generation planet Mars. So we can obtain a lot of information of the first generation planet Mars by using return samples from these small planets, small bodies. So first, uh, first of all, I'd like to summarize the problems in the planet Mars formation and evolution as follows. The first problem is that uh, there are many obstacles in the process of dust glowing into planet Mars in the plot solar disk. There's the bouncing, fragmentation, and radial drift barrier in the dust growth. The radial drift barrier can be cleared if the dust are fully fractal aggregate, but the astronomical observation showed that the uh, dust are compact spheroidal aggregates. And more, a moderate level of turbulence should suppress the dust setting over gravitational instabilities to form planet mouse. The second problem is that uh, we don't understand how much of the radial mixing of the planet Mars and their fragment during the planetary accretion stage. So uh, what was the effect of the possible migration of giant gas planets? And uh, how did the radial mixing influence the origin of water and the organics on the early Earth? So the clues to solve these problems may be found in small asteroid and comet. So asteroids and comets may be a good analog of planet Mars. As you know, there is a death barrier of planetary growth between centimeter-sized pebbles and 100 kilometer-sized planet Mars. And the physical property and dynamical behavior of these intermediate bodies in the death barrier are still unknown. The recent exploration, including return samples from small asteroid and comet, shed light on the study of these objects in the death valley. For example, the parent bodies of a small asteroid should be fossil of planet Mars, and many of them are byproducts of collisional fragments events. And there are small self-gravitating and consolidated bodies like planet Mars. So the Ryugu sample suggests a radial transport of planet Mars from beyond the Saturn orbit to in the asteroid belt due to giant planet migration in the plot solar disk. So uh, we explain after. So our chapter is exploration based reconstruction of planet Mars. So using this result from different missions, we review what much kilometer to and uh, sub-kilometer bodies tell us about the planet Mars from the past perspective of shape, structure, impacts, mass ejection, and other processes. Furthermore, we also explore how these new results fit in with current scenarios of collision evolution and growth or disruption for planet Mars. So next, I'd like to uh, talk about the uh, rendezvous exploration of small asteroids and comets. So here, I'd like to focus on the topics of asteroid Ryugu and Bennu. So they're, they're the intermediate weight member of small bodies. So there is a photo show the asteroid Itokawa and Ryugu and Bennu. So this is not asteroid, it's a comet, nuclear, uh, Chernimok Gerashimenko. 
So this is asteroid Ryugu, so explored by Hayabusa 2 mission, Japanese mission. Hayabusa 2 investigated on site this asteroid from 2018 to 2019 for one and a half year. This is a small sheet type asteroid with a diameter of about 900 meter, and it has a top shape. So it is very obvious that uh, Ryugu has a clear so bulge uh, on the equator. And the surface is covered with a large boulders like this. The black density is about 1.2 grams per cubic centimeter, a little bit uh, heavier than water. And the estimated black porosity is uh, 50 to 60 percent. So that means half of the uh, body is uh, uh, space. So Ryugu is considered to be loosely reaccumulated lava pile body. According to the intensive study of Ryugu by Hayabusa mission, we have now a standard model for evolution of Ryugu from parent body to the current state. The parent body of Ryugu was formed 4.5 billion years ago, and it could have an extremely uniform interior. So one billion years ago, parent body may be disrupted by S-type asteroid collision. Then the top shape was formed less than 20 million years ago. And after that, orbital evolution occurred at 8 million years ago. And it could be excursion toward the sun. Then the rotation slowed down the spinning. So as you can see that the Ryugu is not the first generation planet shimmers. The parent body was disrupted more than once, and the fragments were reaccumulated by self gravity to form double parent body. So Ryugu is a second, uh, second or later generation planet shimmers, we think. So asteroid Bennu is also a small double parent asteroid explored by NASA's Osiris Lex mission. So there are several similarities between Ryugu and Bennu. So they are top-shaped labrapile bodies with low density about 1.2 gram cubic centimeter. They have fine, no fine regress, the low albedo and flat of the spectra. So the borders have low thermal inertia, suggesting the low mechanical strength of several hundred kilopascal. And furthermore, the surface have an extremely low intergrain cohesion. It's less than one pascal, almost no cohesion. But some difference in the composition of water-bearing material, water-bearing mirror was observed. The reason of this difference will be solved after Osiris Lake returned the sample this year, September. So next, I'd like to talk about the return sample from Ryugu. So these videos show the touchdown operation of Hayabusa 2 to recover the sample. Hayabusa 2 gradually descended toward the surface, and the surface material was sampled by impactor at the moment of the touchdown. Then Hayabusa ascended by jetting gas thruster so we can find dust cloud and many fragments ejected from the surface by this gas luster. The dust cloud may indicate that the surface is easy to move and has weak cohesion. So the corrected surface samples return to the Earth on December 6, 2020. So this movie shows the trajectory of the uh, re-entry capsule. And this photograph shows one of the return sample with a size of one centimeter, so larger one. A sample analysis showed us that there are a lot of hydrated minerals in it. And it means that uh, Ryugu's parent body had uh, liquid water we confirmed. So 
By further analysis, it is shown that the Lugo's sample was almost similar to the most primitive cone light CI. And uh, liquid water was discovered in the fluid inclusion, like this. Here, hole shows the uh, liquid inclusions. Actually, fluid in inclusion was CO2 rich brine. This means that the uh, apparent body of Ryugu could be formed at a region colder than CO2 snow line, so which is CO2 condensation temperature. Here is evidence of CO, CO2. So we have now results showing the isotopic anomalies of heavy metals and oxygen. So this figure shows the plots of isotope content for titanium, chrome, oxygen, and iron. The data can be clearly separated into three groups in this figure. So non-carbonaceous condylite, carbonaceous condylite, and CI condylite, and Ryugu. So Ryugu and other CI condylite may have been much further than other uh, carbonaceous condylite, such as CM, CV, and CO here. So these different type of parent bodies uh, could be scattered and migrated in the solar nebula, we think. So next, so I'd like to talk about the connections between shapes and the processes. So labor by asteroids show unique shapes, so we can infer their unique evolution processes. So this unique shape may be categorized into four different shapes. The first one is round shape here. This shape includes top shape bodies like Bennu and Ryugu. And the second, shape is an elongated shape. Geomorphos is an example of this shape. The third one is a contact binary here, a shape apparently having two components softly touching each other, like Itokawa, some asteroids have similar shapes. And any asteroids not categorized in them are considered to be unclassified. So each shape has a unique structure condition due to its rotational state. The second and third law here show the most sensitive locations on the surface and the interior when they have a homogeneous structure shown by a uh, yellow color. So among these shapes, top-shaped asteroid with a round shape category are one of the most common shapes. Is. So Ryugu and Bennu and uh, uh, Didymos here are uh, example of top-shaped bodies. The next slide focuses on the evolution mechanism of top-shaped asteroid. The top shapes are featured by their unique asymmetric shapes with clear equatorial ridge or bulge. The top-shaped asteroids have a unique evolution process due to rotation after reaccumulation. This slide shows an overview of the evolution process depending on the structure and the rotation state. The schematic illustration A shows how top-shaped asteroids evolve when the spin and the internal structure are provided. If top-shaped asteroids have homogeneous structure, then they continuously become of light. As the spin becomes faster, eventually collapsing to be shed. So in Fig B, if the structure is homogeneous but supported by high strengths, the original shape remains intact. However, when the internal stress reaches the yield strengths, it collapses catastrophically. So finally, so in Fig C, if an asteroid has a weaker layer on the top of the core, so the surface region is firstly influenced by rotation and removed. If the spin continued to become high, the internal core eventually collapsed. 
So these results show that the rotation speed is important factor to determine the shapes and the fate of small bodies. So uh, as I previously talked that Ryugu is a second later generation, uh, later generation or later generation planet Shimas, and it could, be, it could be formed by catastrophic disruption and the accumulation of impact fragments by self-gravity. So the numerical simulation was conducted to study the relationship between the first generation and the second generation planet Shimas. So in order to simulate an asteroid disruption, the simulation requires to compute two different physical processes with a quite different time scale. So one is to compute the fragmentation phase, which include the propagation of a shock wave and the cracks into the target. It is a short time scale process. Another is to compute the gravitational phase between the uh, generated fragments. It's a long time scale process. So in order to model the fragmentation phase, two different numerical techniques has been used. They are 3D smooth particle hydrodynamic impact code, SBH, and the grid codes such as ICEL and CDH. And these models have fracture and plosity include strength plus fracture uh, made by the drug pressure like it criterion, and plosity is shown by the, uh, based, based on the PR and epsilon alpha model, and the uh, equation of state such as Tritzon, Aneos, and Sesame. And in order to model the gravitational phase, PKT grab code has been used. So PKD grab is a, a parallel KD3 gravity code, and it is a, a combines parallelism and three code to compute force, uh, forces rapidly. So it computes the gravitational interaction of generated fragments and their potential accumulation through their mutual interaction, uh, mutual attraction. Next, I'd like to show the example of numerical simulation for catalytic disruption and reaccumulation. So this simulation shows the formation of an irregular shaped small body due to reaccumulation. As I was shown in the previous slide, the simulation was conducted separately for fragmentation phase and the reaccumulation phase. The left animation shows the fragmentation phase for 100 km impacted at the 5 km per second. So typically, the target is pulverized into solid fragment to 10 to 100 meters in diameter. And the uh, right animation is the reaccumulation phase, and the, those solid fragments shown by green dots reaccumulate due to their mutual attraction and form lava pile. The final shape, in this case, the, accumulation, the accumulated body is like asteroid Itokawa here. And the next, I'd like to show the formation of a top shape small body due to reaccumulation. So I'd like to remind you the top shape asteroid Ryugu and the venue here. So this animation is the reaccumulation phase for disruption of 100 km size body. So you can see that the solid fragment reaccumulate and the form lava pile during gravitational phase. So this simulation also calculates the impact heating uh, during the collision. The heated temperature was shown by uh, colors from blue cold region to red hot region. So you can see that the most accumulated material is not heated or compacted. It means that the reaccumulated fragment keeps a pristine state of the material. So we can expect that the recovered sample from Ryugu keep the original state in the parent body. So we can stimulate when the first generation planet tremors was the size of 100 km, the asteroid smaller than 50 km originate from the disruption of a larger planet body and have lava pile structures. 
So they are the second generation plant moths. Next, we apply the same new maker method to the formation of comet nuclei. And this photo shows the comet nuclei explored by the space mission. So you can see the shape of the comet nuclei is mostly elongated or uh, bilobate body. So any formation theory of, for comet nuclei, we have to account for the existence of these bilobate or at least elongated bodies. So as you know, the comet nuclei are supposed to be fossil of icy plant mass and it could be the first generation plant mass. But the size of the nuclei is several kilometers, which is rather smaller than 100 kilometers. Thus, here we discuss the possibility of the second generation plant mass for the comet nuclei. That is, can catastrophic disruption lead to bilobate comet? So then, these big questions were studied by the new numerical simulation. So in this calculation, the 10 to 100 kilometer size icy bodies are impacted at wide, wide velocity, velocity range from 20 meter per second to three kilometer per second. So this movie shows the result of the uh, collision at the impact velocity of 20 meter per second. Low velocity collision and no cohesion, but angular ripples is 18 degrees. And this animation focuses on the second largest remnant at the center. So at the left slide, at the left on the slide, so final lava pile bodies formed in this simulation are shown. So we can find many of uh, elongated bodies as a result of the simulation. So in some cases, for the catastrophic disruption, for example, a bilobate body was formed as the impact velocity of, in this case, 150 meter per second. And it is found that the heated and compacted material does not reaccumulate. So this means that uh, uh, the accumulated lava pi body is almost composed of pristine material. This means that uh, it includes a lot of volatiles in it. So the new maker simulation for the catastrophic impact for icy bodies show that the low speed impact occurred among the accumulated fragments. So, and the majority of brata are kept intact during the catastrophic disruption. So most of material can remain pristine. By low bait and elongated shapes are formed in a catastrophic disruption, as well as bulk densities are consistent. So this means that the formation of uh, uh, 67P Cherimoku Gerashimenko and the uh, bilobed comets can happen at any time from collisional disruption. So next, uh, I'd like to talk about uh, uh, impact cratering and the seismic shaking on small lava pile bodies. Here, I'd like to introduce Hayabusa 2 impact experiment on asteroid Ryugu. So it was conducted to recover the subsurface material from Ryugu, but it was a good opportunity to study a cratering process on the small lava body with microgravity. The small carrier impactor with a size of uh, 13 centimeter and the mass of two kilogram was impacted on the surface of Ryugu at two kilometer per second in this experiment. The ejector cutting was observed in situ by the pliable camera and the artificial impact crater, we call it uh, uh, SCA crater, was observed by the onboard camera of Hayabusa 2. So here is a, a pre and a post image of the impact area. And we can find the artificial impact crater at the center. And the shape model of this artificial crater is shown here. So we can find the elevated limb around the crater. And the crater diameter is about uh, 15 meter, and the depth is about uh, 2 meter. 
And uh, next, this slide shows the animation of eject curtain glows observed by DCAM3 camera. So we can determine the crater glow's time is about uh, 200 seconds by using this uh, images. And after 200 seconds, eject deposition occurred. So this time scale is almost consistent with uh, a theoretical uh, time scale of 250 uh, seconds, uh, which is estimated to by the greater formation theory in the gravity-dominated region, which means uh, greater size was uh, constrained by the uh, gravity. So we can propose that the uh, crater formation on Ryugu with microgravity of 10 to the minus 5g occurred in the gravity-dominated region, not the strength, uh, strength constrained, uh, uh, never constrained the crater size. Uh, next, we discuss the cohesion of uh, Ryugu's surface based on the result of SCA crater and the conventional crater scaling law. So this figure shows the crater uh, radius estimated by the crater size scaling law in the strength-dominated region. So two typical uh, weak materials are shown here. So they indicate how crater radius increases with a decrease with the strength. So like this. This line shows a CI crater uh, radius of uh, 7.3 meter. So when we choose uh, weakly cemented basalt for the analog of a Diego surface, the surface strength should be smaller than 1.3 Pascal. So this uh, may show that the upper limit of the surface strength is less than a few Pascal. So actually, the uh, crater was uh, formed in the gravity-dominated region. It was uh, clarified by the uh, eject curtain growth. So the crater radius can be calculated by the conventional scaling law, like this uh, by scaling. And this uh, crater size can be reproduced by the parameter of the dry coarse sand, like this one. So also the Ryugu surface is covered with a various sized borders like this one. The impact crater can be uh, reproduced by the parameter of uh, dry coarse sun like this. So we also observe the seismic shaking during the SCA crater formation. So distribution of displacement of boulder after impact shown in the middle image. So these colors, the displacement here, we can see that the displacement as small as a few centimeters in induced by SCA impact. They can be observed beyond 30 meters flow, far from the crater center. The light figure uh, showed the impact induced acceleration changing with the distance and it was obtained by the laboratory experiment, so this line. So that figure shows the area showing the disturbance. So this pink and the blue area is much the area where the impact induced acceleration is above the surface gravity of Ryugu, so this area. In summary, the impact experiment on Ryugu will clarify that the surface of a small rubber ball body was easy to move, and the cohesion was less than a few Pascal. So next, I'd like to talk about the material ejection for small rubber ball bodies. So there are several mechanisms for the mass ejection from small bodies. So one is a tidal disruption. So rubber ball asteroid passing close to the Earth at low relative velocity can be spun up and uh, pulled apart by tidal forces. So this is an example of tidal deformation and mass ejection for a few kilometer size rubber pie body. The outcome of the mass ejection depends on the parameters like uh, periapsis, velocity, spin uh, period, long axis orientation at periapsis, and the spin axis orientation. So next mechanism is a yolk effect. 
So when the asteroid absorbed and uh, emitted sunlight, so radiation uh, produces a change in the asteroid spin rate and obliquity. So it is called Yop talks. Here is one example of Yop effect on a small low profile body. It shows the rotation mass shedding by Yop spin up. So left is a top view and right is a, a side view. The spin up by uh, Yop talks produces down slope movement toward the equator and eventually mass shedding. It can be one of the uh, reasons for the creation of binary of asteroid. In summary, the small labrovite body is easy to deform and eject mass due to several mechanisms. And sometimes the ejected mass may create a satellite to form a binary. The finally, I'd like to talk about the discussion on the perspective in this chapter. The first of all, I will discuss about the constituent of planet shimmers. So planet shimmers were uh, considered to be a composed of pebbles. So these pebbles may be related to the uh, following evidence discovered by uh, explorations. So Ryugo's sample showed the apparent frequency peak of a particles at one millimeter to a few centimeter in diameter and the low thermal inertia of boulders on Ryugu and Beno is consistent with these boulders having a polar structure made of constituent particles a few millimeters in diameter. And the secondly, I discuss about the size of plant mounds. The expected size of plant mounds is about 100 kilometers when they are formed by the streaming instability. The two lobes of 27P, Charimoku uh, apply more there, but they are too small, a few kilometers because to have been uh, created by uh, <laughs> sleeping instability. So they may have formed through direct collision of pebbles or collision disruption and reaccumulation, but uh, fluffy fractal aggregates found in 67 are extremely fragile, uh, so that the uh, presence of such a, a structure uh, challenge, challenges the original models for relative uh, velocity larger than one meter per second. So further studies are required to clarify the formation process of comet nuclei and the typical size of icy plant smells. And third, I, do, I discuss about the planetary migration in the early solar system. Based on the return sample analysis of isotope and the magnetic field, the apparent body of Ryugu is expected to have been scattered largely. It could move from outside the uh, Saturn orbit to the inner asteroid belt. So, so finally, I'd like to say perspective. The return sample by Hayabusa 2 and the samples to be returned by Osiris Rex this September are expected to provide a lot of information. So their uh, information related to the origin of carbonaceous asteroid and possibly on the information and the evolution of icy plant smells. As you know, the current theory of plant accretion has a number of unresolved uh, issues. So a uh, multidisciplinary effort involving small body exploration, so experiments and uh, new medical simulations remains, occur, remains uh, crucial to reveal the true nature and law of plant smells. Thank you for your patience, that's it. Okay, so it's time for question and uh, discussion. Yeah, okay. All right, thank you for an interesting talk. Uh, I'm uh, Ryo Tazaki from University of Grenoble Alp in France. So I was wondering uh, if, if there are any attempts at deriving the refractive indices of Ryugu samples 
And I'm asking, I'm asking because uh, the refractive indices are very important to try, when we try to make connections between solar system materials and dust particles in protoplanetary disks proved by astronomical observations like ALMA. The, yeah, I agree with you. So, so but so I, I have to, but sorry, I can't uh, no, understand your question. Ah, so, so is there any attempts at deriving the refractive indices of the Ryugu samples? Uh, so there is a lot of so, analysis uh, related to the refractory, refractory elements of uh, samples, but uh, I'm not uh, so specialist to analyze the uh, samples, so I cannot uh, uh, present in this here. I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> uh, Vlad Lyra here, uh, New Mexico State. I was wondering about the conclusion that you drew for 67P, uh, uh, because the same thing cannot be said about Arrokoth, right? That it's uh, that is coming from co collisions, that wouldn't be the case. Arukov in the, uh, the Kuiper Belt, it's two lobes uh, of 20 kilometers each, and um, it's pristine, right? Uh, it, it's formed as a, a cold classical. It has not undergone co collisions. The collisional uh, rate in the Kuiper Belt is too small. So how do you reconcile the conclusions that you drew then for 67P with those that we got from Arakov? So, <laughs> it's very uh, difficult to say. So, you mean that the Arakov is a, a, a planet mass, a first generation planet mass, and there is no uh, heavy collision, you think? So, but uh, our results show that uh, uh, so Chemekirashimenko may have a heavy collision. So the so relationship between the uh, Kuiper Belt icy bodies and the comet is, uh, is now not so, <coughs> I have no idea, I'm sorry, but so let's uh, study continue. Thank you. Okay, over there. Hi, Mordecai Maclow, American Museum of Natural History, over here. So, Hi. Um, I would caution that it's not at all clear that the streaming instability can't make many small bodies. Certainly in Johansson et al. 2015, we found a rising power law down to our numerical resolution, and we were making, you know, 10 kilometer sized objects. And uh, I have no particular reason to think that two kilometers isn't possible. So forming, and of course, uh, the gravitational collapse of um, a small uh, dust clouds does form binary type objects very readily. So from that perspective, arguing that 67P could be primordial remains, I think, viable. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Sorry, so I cannot catch your explanation, but the uh, you mean that the Charima Gerashimenko so uh, keeps the uh, original state of uh, fluffy materials uh, uh, initial uh, I, coagulation condition? I'm saying that it can't be ruled out as having formed from streaming instability just because it's small. Uh -huh. Small okay. bodies can also form from SI. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah, I understand. Okay. Hello. My name is Elizabeth Unerman from the Center for Astrophysics, Harvard and Smithsonian. And I was wondering if we could possibly learn more about the CO2 snow line and how it may have evolved in the protosolar disk in terms of location in the disk based on the Ryugu samples. So uh, from the Ryugu samples, so, so some analysis showed that uh, uh, CO2 line inside, so this is a result of a uh, uh, sample analysis. So we they found find uh, so uh, liquid water including uh, uh, CO2. So that means the uh, CO2 including ice was trapped by the uh, parent body. After that, it uh, uh, may have some sample uh, evolution and uh, the Ryugu was formed. 
So the, uh, the region where the Ryugu was formed should be uh, uh, beyond the CO2 snow line. If not, there is no uh, such a CO2 ice is it not included in the uh, apparent body. So that's the reason. Uh, that's the reason. Thank you. Back to you. Uh, hi, I'm Shoji Mori, uh, Tohoku University, Japan, and I'm interested in the, uh, how the uh, representative uh, uh, the sample, uh, return sample is of the main uh, bulk composition of Ryugu. So it, I imagine that uh, it's a bit difficult question, but could you hear your, question, uh, your thoughts? Yes, I'm sorry, I cannot hear the uh, uh, final question. Okay, uh, I'm asking about uh, how representative uh, of the, uh, the return sample is compared to the bulk composition of the uh, Ryugu. Uh, bulk composition, uh, so just to, so sample was uh, analyzed by the analysis team, so they uh, assumed that uh, this material, this uh, uh, return sample, the size of a uh, centimeter to a millimeter size, is a representative of a uh, bulk Ryugu, they assumed. But they uh, analyzed uh, so tens of uh, uh, particles, so they analyzed and they ablazed the uh, element abundances. Okay, thank you. Did it well, yeah. make sense? Yeah. Uh, Martijn Wilhelm, Leiden University. So I have a question about uh, the classification of asteroid shapes, where uh, contact binaries were its own uh, class. But I was curious um, uh, if. Uh, uh, if the distribution of the other shapes of the different components of a contact binary uh, can tell us anything, if that maybe differs from uh, the distribution of shapes of uh, single asteroids. So, um, you mean that, uh, so, <laughs> i sorry, please explain one more. Okay. <laughs> what um, is your question? Uh, so, um, Uh, so I'm, I'm just curious what uh, the distribution of asteroid shapes would be if you're just looking at the single individual components of contact binaries. Mm -hmm. And if there's any difference with the, uh, the shapes of uh, single asteroids and if that can tell us anything. So, don't <laughs> Uh, you mean that, uh, so for example, the uh, asteroid Itokawa is a uh, uh, really is a uh, uh, binary, but uh, after that, to uh, touch each other to make a uh, one asteroid. So you mean that, uh, so the Itoka is a uh, uh, previously binary asteroid. After that, it goes to a uh, uh, single, uh, that kind of uh, asteroid. You, you I mean, for example, if um, contact binaries, for example, may preferentially consist of two uh, top-shaped asteroids, or something in that direction. Not that's right. So, I'm sorry, but uh, please uh, talk after the session. <laughs> I'm sorry, I cannot catch, actually. Hello, thank you, sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, yeah, over there. Uh, Michelle Bannister, University of Canterbury. Um, these inclusions with the CO rich material is, you know, that's really lovely to see. This argument that Ryugu forms uh, um, in the outer part of the disk, how much volatile loss would you anticipate um, as a result of the migration processes to get it to its current location? Because if Ryugu is, of course, a typical asteroid, then you'd be seeing that volatile loss across a large part of the population. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not so uh, familiar with these uh, uh, issues, so I will so answer on the uh, matter most. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, could I j just to, to comment to the impact side of that? Um, 
you're, you're delaying the impact timing for the uh, rubble pile formation mm -hmm. to quite late in the process. Do you think that's consistent with the migration uh, part of it? So it's maybe difficult to say, so I have no idea just now. Sorry. Okay, so any other question come? Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, three, there were the three people. So oh, okay. Oh, sorry, <laughs> yeah. I, I missed. Okay, yeah, over there. So, hi, Arako san. So, I'm Soto Arako from Jamstick, <coughs> Japan. So, I have a naive question on the catastrophe disruption origin of comets. So, the comets have comets contain so anhydrous minerals and also amorphous size. So, do you have any comments on the summer evolution of comets from the point of view of catastrophic disruption origin? Oh, in the so case. Maybe small comments might be preferred from the point of view of retain of amorphous one or anhydrous one, I guess. But maybe you have comments. <laughs> so, yeah, so there is a simulation uh, conducted by Patrick Michel. They say that. Uh, uh, so high temperature just occur around the impact area. So most of the materials are uh, pristine material. And uh, so these pristine materials uh, attracted each other to make a uh, lava body. So that, uh, uh, that means uh, such as uh, if the comet nuclei is uh, such a uh, greeted lava pipe body, so the pristine material is uh, kept. So. <laughs> So just a simulation. So, but but uh, the radiogenic activity may also cause the heating. But uh, in the case of uh, a small bodies, as small as uh, a few kilometers, the radioactive, radioactive heating is not so important, I think. But uh, this is, uh, uh, you know that very well, oh, yes. <laughs> I think. Thank, thank you so much. <laughs> OK, so next. Yeah. Hi, Anish Bawaraj, UC San Diego, United States. Um, I was curious if the composition of the asteroid like, could have an impact on the shape evolution. Composition was what? Of the composition of the body could have an impact on the shape evolution, make certain shapes more likely than others. Composition of a I think the uh, composition of uh, rocky and ice materials, the difference is important to the inf uh, to affect the impact phenomena, because uh, uh, so difference of material strength is so different. Rocky material and the ice material it affect, and also the some uh, thermal property is also different. So I think the material property is important to affect the uh, uh, impact phenomena and uh, the accumulation of uh, uh, such a lava body. Hi. Thank you. Take. OK, so well, oh, no other people? Okay. All right. Oh, no other co uh, question, comment? OK, if so, uh, please thank the speaker again.